Hello, and welcome to this month's masterclass all about the concept of comedogenicity, or how products can or cannot create comedones in the skin. So just to run down a little bit about comedones. So comedones are uh, the little non-inflammatory lesions in your skin that are considered pre-acne. So they're the tiny bumps you see. Sometimes when you stretch your skin, you can see them. And they're the spots or little bumps that aren't red. They're te they tend to be skin colored. And they're the ones that can conceivably turn into acne spots um, over time. So a comedone is pre-acne and it reflects that the skin cells are sticky and they're not shedding out of the hair follicle the way they should, and they, they um, stack up or they kind of clump together in the hair follicle, and that creates a little bump on your skin known as a comedone, and that's in a vellus hair follicle, so not in a terminal hair follicle. Now, there is no legal definition for the word comedogenic, okay? Um, there is no list of ingredients that is recognized as being specifically comedogenic, um, and skincare manufacturers and, and, and companies and even consumers um, they think that the term non-comedogenic implies that the final product that they're being sold does not clog facial pores uh, with skin cells, debris, or oil. So again, the concept here is that if you clog the pore with a product um, that is maybe overly oily or whatever, that you can get little pimples uh, due to that. Um, now, that means that the product is acnegenic, but not that doesn't cause acne vulgaris. So that's also something you have to differentiate because acne vulgaris or proper acne is due to an inherent problem within the hair follicle. So nothing makes that worse necessarily. It's the way that the hair follicle functions in an abnormal way. So the skin cells don't shed properly. If a product is comedogenic, it means that it causes the hair follicle to get clogged with stuff. So it's an external problem. Now, no one knows why certain products do that, but it has nothing to do with acne vulgaris. It's a different process. And we actually refer to acne being caused by products, skincare products or makeup as acne cosmetica. So it's different from the androgen driven disease, which you and I know as acne vulgaris, okay? Now it takes four weeks for a comedone to form on normal human facial skin, if it were to be exposed to these poor clogging products and what exactly those are, we need to talk about. So the first time it entered the world, the concept of comedogenic was in 1972. Um, and there was a paper published linking the use of cosmetic formulations in women to this type of um, acneiform eruption referred to as acne cosmetica. So from that point onwards, big skincare got all into it and they're like, okay, we need to figure out which chemicals do this so we can sell our products and say that they don't have it in them. So the rabbit ear model was created, um, which was the um, kind of model used to distinguish whether or not products were comedogenic or not. Now, 10 years later, a human model was created and it was um, humans who are prone to develop um, comedones and it was, it was, everything was tested on their backs. Okay. So now the only the human models used because the rabbit ear model is known to be flawed because the rabbit ear is not the same as human skin, but either is a back. Okay. So the skin on the back is also not the same as facial skin, but you know, that's what we use now. So basically what happens is an, ingre an ingredient is tested on a person's back for two to four weeks. And there's also a positive control. So a substance that we know guarantees comedones. For example, um, there's something called crude coal tar. There's another chemical called dioxin, um, which is guaranteed to cause comedones. And then a negative control. So something that definitely does not cause comedones. And the thing that is the negative control in all the studies is pure Vaseline. So if you ever worried that Vaseline causes spots, it doesn't it's actually the negative control in comedogenicity testing on humans, okay? So then after two to four weeks, the comedones are extracted from the back of the uh, unfortunate patient and looked at under the microscope, and then they count the number of comedones to see whether there are any um, new ones, okay? And that's the test. Now, this is an exaggeration of real life because in human normal facial skin, you don't apply something under occlusion to your face for two to four weeks. That doesn't actually happen. It's not quite the same as using facial skincare products. So the question here is, are any ingredients or products truly comedogenic? So I just mentioned two of them. So crude coal tar um, is thought to be comedogenic. And it seems that 
something to be comedogenic has to be there in a certain concentration. So, for example, lanolin, acylated lanolin alcohol, can be comedogenic if it's in a high enough concentration. But in a low concentration, it isn't, okay? So that's a key thing here. It looks like a lot of chemicals, like octyl palmitate, isopropyl myristate, they can all be comedogenic in a high enough concentration. But if they're in a low concentration, they are not. Which is why if you put acetylated lanolin alcohol into a skincare product, it's only going to be like a little bit in there, basically. And you're only using a little bit of product at a time anyway. So that finished product does not cause comedones. It's actually extremely rare for a finished product to cause comedones. It's almost impossible, to be fair, unless it's filled with 100% acetylated lanolin alcohol, which nothing is. So there was a study that looked at the comedogenicity of a variety of skincare products like face powder, cleanser, moisturizer, sunscreen, day cream, night cream, powder makeup, and bronzing powder. And they were put on the back of people for four weeks and none of them were found to cause comedones. But every one of those products had at least one ingredient in it that was thought to be comedogenic at a high concentration. So this occurs because the concentration of the seemingly comedogenic ingredient is so much lower in the finished product than when the ingredient is tested on its own. So the point here is virtually nothing that you put on your skin is comedogenic anymore. Okay, because the concentration of these chemicals is so low compared to what you need to actually stimulate a comedone. Now, it's still really controversial. Comedogenicity of a substance has nothing to do with how greasy or oily it is. It's the chemical structure that is the issue, not the greasiness. So the most potent pore clogging substances are not oily at all. For example, an environmental pollutant um, like dioxin. But the underlying mechanism how this occurs, we don't really know. So it's all very, very confusing. And the, the point here is you don't have to buy a product that's labeled non-comedogenic if you suffer from acne or for whatever reason, because that term doesn't actually mean anything. It's a marketing term, it's a sales term, but in the real world of skincare, it actually is totally irrelevant. So you can use Vaseline. It's not going to cause you to have spots. You can use any skincare product and regardless of what's in it, the concentration is going to be so low, it's not going to cause you to have spots. So I appreciate this is a very complicated topic because it is, um, and it's hard to get your head around that. But the, the, the bottom line here is that virtually nothing you're going to put on your skin is going to give you comedones. Don't worry about how, or how oily or greasy it is because that is not relevant when it comes to comedones forming. And you don't have to specifically look for products that have a non-comedogenic label on them because that doesn't actually mean anything in the real world. I hope that wasn't too confusing. Obviously, let me know if you have any questions.